Hello, my name is Professor McNicholas, and I hope this short video might answer some questions you might have if your child has an eating disorder or if you worry they might develop one. Eating disorders are mental illnesses in which a child or a young person has significant body image disturbance and a morbid fear of gaining weight. They may restrict significantly what they eat, they may engage in over-exercising, or they may engage in compensatory behaviours such as vomiting, taking laxatives or diuretics. If your child has anorexia nervosa, they may be at a very low body weight. And this may be associated with a lot of physical symptoms, such as feeling tired, dizzy, irritable, or faint, especially when standing up. If they have bulimia nervosa, they may also engage in periods of binge eating, followed by compensatory behaviours like vomiting. And some children just have binge eating disorders where they eat an uncontrollable amount of food and have tremendous guilt and shame afterwards. You might also have heard or your child might suffer from ARFID, in which either the quantity or the quality of food is insufficient to allow normal growth and development. This eating disorder is not linked with any body image disturbance, and it may have been there for some time and be linked with developmental or sensory issues, or maybe a recent onset, such as after some traumatic event like near choking. Any of these conditions might have led your GP to refer you to CAMS for treatment. The two main focuses of treatment are weight restoration, and here the clinicians would support you, the parent, to help refeed your child and allow them to eat adequately so that they may regain the weight and continue with normal development. This is very important in order to minimize any physical symptoms. The second area is talking therapy working with your child to try and help them identify the negative thinking they have around body image or their fear of weight, and also to help with other anxiety and depressive symptoms they might have. Sometimes medication might be useful as well. Before COVID, your clinician would gauge the progress of your child by inviting you to the clinic and asking questions about physical symptoms, whether they're feeling cold or tired or have fainted, what their concentration is like, what their mood is like, and also conduct a physical exam, weighing your child, doing blood pressure, heart rate, and maybe temperature. On account of COVID and the risk of infection, most face-to-face -face consultations have now been replaced by telephone or video assessments. And this means we're asking you to help us monitor the progress of your child during this time. That means we'll ask you to very carefully monitor what your child is eating and try and calculate daily calorie intakes for us. We'll ask you to observe and to record the amount of exercise and the intensity your child is engaging in and whether they're also engaging in compensatory behaviours, trips to the bathroom, maybe vomiting. Because your child isn't able to come into the clinic to have their weight assessed, we'd ask you to weigh your child twice a week, preferably first thing in the morning after going to the bathroom and on a digital scales. This is very important because it will allow us to see progress from week to week. We recognise that this might place additional stress on you, the parent, during this already difficult time, and we need to balance between the additional stress versus not inviting you into the clinic on account of the risk of infection. It's very important we do this carefully in order to make sure that your child doesn't become more medically unwell during the COVID period. Meal times can be very stressful for a young person with an eating disorder, and maybe particularly so during COVID. The best advice is to try and plan ahead, make sure the food items are in the house and available. Try and follow a routine of three meals and three snacks a day. If possible, try and de-stress yourself prior to meals so that you will be able to be calm yet firm during meal time. Having post-meal distractions available will also help your child. 
No matter how difficult or stressful mealtimes might be, it's very important to remember that food is like crucial medication to your child at this time and will allow your child to be safely managed as an outpatient. For some children not going to school has been helpful in that they have been removed from school stressors or bullying and they're enjoying more time at home with the family. But for other children, it may be more difficult on account of the lack of academic distraction or the lack of social contact with peers that have been positive. And sometimes there may be extra tensions or difficulties at home trying to manage everybody and adapt to a new way of living. It's very important that you remember your own mental health well-being and your own stress levels and reach out to your support network. Let your clinician know if you need additional support yourself. Following a routine is just as important to you as it is to your child. With healthy eating, sleep, moderate exercise if possible, and engaging in pleasurable and often family activities, such as watching television, playing family games. The College of Psychiatry have a website with some useful books that might be helpful to you, and the BodyWise uh, organisation also are offering additional supports. But do please let us know if we can do anything more for you at this time.